Let's see how they line up. On the Shell Helix grid board, the Super Tourers at Mount Panorama. On pole position, Craig Baird, the New Zealander, with Jeff Brabham, his BMW teammate alongside him. Row two, Brad Jones in the first of the Audi Sport Quattros and Paul Morris in the third BMW. Row three, Jim Richards in the Volvo with Jeff Ball alongside in the Peugeot. Row four, Mark Adams in the second Peugeot and Tamara Vidali all the way from Italy in the second Audi Quattro. Stephen Voigt and Paul Nelson line up behind them. Row six, Rob Tweedy and Kurt Kratzman. And on the final row of the grid, Bob Holden in the favour Castell BMW. Standing by for the start of the Super Tourers at Mount Panorama. Joining us in commentary today, the reigning British touring car champion, John Cleland. John, great competition ahead of us. Just yes. 10 seconds away from the start, and away they go off the line. Craig Baird, the pole man, and the Audis left behind. Not a good start there for Brad. Up to the first corner, great start from the pole man Baird. The two BMWs filed in behind him, so it's one, two, three for the Bavarian manufacturer, the Audi in fourth as they climb mountain straight for the first of five laps. And I guess, John, uh, the Audi 70 kilos heavier than the BMW in the current trim. It might struggle climbing up this hill. Yeah, for sure. He's going to lose out to Jim Richard for the look of things here. But Jimmy Jim's Richards. Gonna get him. Yeah. In the Volvo, sneaks up the inside of Brad Jones. Plenty of grunt in a straight line from the Volvo. He takes the Audi, moves up to fourth position as they come up the shelf for the first time. And nonetheless, with the four-wheel drive, we might have expected the Audis to get off the line a little bit quicker, but they didn't. And Brad Jones is, uh, is struggling a little bit here at the moment in fifth place as they go up the mountain for the first time. I'm disappointed the way Brad didn't get off the line there. Normally these Audis just leave the line like scalded cats. And he's got the uh, Peugeot right up behind him as well. So he looks like he's struggling for speed climbing up the hill for the first time across the top of the mountain. And I guess these two litre cars, very lightweight, quite small. John uh, Cleland, these would be just as quick if not quicker than the five litre cars across the top. I would reckon from the cutting from BP all the way across the top to McPhillamy and Skyline and even down to Forest Elbow, they'd be equally as fast, if not faster, in some areas, particularly here, than the five litre cars would be, because they're very light and nimble. BMW freight train in the mountain for the first time. Craig Baird, his first drive with the Diet Coke BMW team here, 26 years of age, from Hamilton in New Zealand. Multiple New Zealand car champion, multiple winner also in open wheelers, Formula Fords, Formula Atlantics. Currently driving for BMW in South Africa this year. And certainly a very impressive showing in his first run at Mount Panorama. Leads his teammates down Conrad straight for the first time. Richards in fourth position in the Volvo. And looks like Brad Jones gathering speed as he holds on to fifth position. I don't suppose there'll be any team orders between these three BMWs. <laughs> that could be quite entertaining as the race progresses. Leads him through the first time, breaking hard for Caltex Chase. Jim Richards replacing Peter Brock in the Volvo in fourth position. Brock wanting to concentrate on his Holden Racing Team commitments this weekend. So Jim Richards has proven a master at just about anything he drives, having a great time in the Volvo at Mount Panorama. Breaking hard as they swing on to pit straight. One lap completed, four to go. The BMW steamroller at the front of the pack. Paired in first, Brabham in second, Morris in third, Jimmy Richards in fourth. Brad Jones in fifth and Jeff Paul in the first of the Peugeots in sixth position. I'll tell you what, man, who might be a bit disappointed with this at the moment is Morris in third position because uh, I would have expected to see him probably right up there with Craig Baird rather than sitting in third at the moment. And that he doesn't look at the moment at this stage after just one lap, but he doesn't look to have had much of an opportunity to move up. No, he's going to be disappointed he's not far back at the moment. Currently third in the Australian Super Touring Championship. Just a reminder, this is not a championship round of that series. A separate race at Mount Panorama, but Paul Morris currently third with 118 points. One pole position, one race win at Lakeside this year. Just an indication after his dominance last year of how the Audis have come on strong in 96 with the new A4. I think Jimmy Rich is doing a terrific job there hanging on because he's really never driven the car until this weekend. We've seen Jim Richards before, five times Bathurst winner, four times Australian touring car champion. He's won just about everything. Runs in stock cars, runs in two litres, runs five litres thoroughly enjoys his motorsport. There he is in fourth position in the Volvo. And I've got to say, out of all these cars at Mount Panorama, this five-cylinder Volvo sounds fantastic. That's a glorious sounding car. Car prepared by George Shepard. Next TWR car from the British Touring Car Championship run by Tim Harvey and Ricard Rydell in 95. And look at Brad Jones closing on the back of the Volvo as they run down the mountain. We take race cam on the front of the Audi A4 right up behind the Volvo 850 of Jim Richards. Where the Audi normally scores is on the braking. It's very good with the four-wheel drive when you brake very hard. But the Volvo will pull away in, uh, in straight line speed here. We've got a number of different drivetrain configurations here, John. Rear-wheel drive BMW, front-wheel drive Volvo, and four-wheel drive Audi. 
which where would on this circuit would the various cars have an advantage? I guess the two-wheel drive would struggle through uh, some of the faster corners. Uh, the front-wheel drive will struggle in some of the slower corners, but the rear-wheel drive BMW will be very good on the when they squat down coming out of the left-hander on the chase here onto Murray's and then down to Hell Corner. It'll be very good through there. Front-wheel drive struggled a little bit, but in uh, general terms, the, the front-wheel drive. Volvo will be very fast in a straight line. Look at yeah, Jimmy Richards. Alongside. Yep, he's on the outside. That's Paul Morris. It's not going to work, Jim. So Morris carrying the number one plate from his victory last year. Three laps to go, but Richards is really attacking the BMW. He's all over Morris as they come on a pit straight this time. Good run out of the corner. Edging alongside. He may have got just him. enough under brakes. Yep, yes. got him. I put my money on Richard now. <laughs> well, the Volvo's not uh, lacking for squirt in a straight line got a bit of a weight advantage over the BMWs too. With front wheel drivers 25 kilograms lighter than the BM, so you'll be enjoying that weight advantage up Mountain Straight. But as you can see here, from the front of Brad Jones' car, those BMWs are not lacking for horsepower. Now the Audi struggles a little bit uphill, but it does gain on the downhill section. It does gain on braking and the ability to come out of the slower corners much faster. See how he carried the speed through there much better than the BMW. Yeah, really making up big ground on the BMW up the top of the hill. Richard's just in front there. You can see Morris. Very annoyed about losing that position to Richards. Look at that aggressive wing, this 96 specification wing package on these 95 cars. And that massive wing on the back of the BMW, big gurney flap catching all the wind. As Morris brings it across the top of the mountain, Jones trying to attack, but he just doesn't have the speed of these cars at this section of the circuit. Morris not giving away either. Jim Richards has got him on pitch stroke, but boy, he's gonna have to work hard for it. Look at Morris all over him as they come through McPhillamy Park. That's going to be slowing Jim down slowly too. He's going to have to fend off Morris here. Yeah, it's also allowed Brad Jones to close right up onto the back of Morris's car now. But equally, Morris is going to have to watch what Brad does to him though. That's going to maybe give Jim a bit of a chance to get away. So, breaking hard for Forrest Elbow. Good clean run onto Conrad Strait. Just now the Volvo should pull away here. Is there much difference in technique required, John, when you're driving a front-wheel drive car compared to a rear-wheel drive car? Yes, with a front-wheel drive car, you have to be very delicate. You have to drive it with your fingertips and be very neat and tidy because with 300 brake horsepower and 9-inch wide tyres, you really have to be precise so you just screw all the speed off the car and it just goes nowhere. The thing that impresses me about these cars is uh, they get Monza at the World Cup. They recorded 175 mile an hour on the main straight. That's right. For a car with just 300 horsepower, 1,000 kilos, it just shows the potency of a good power-to-weight ratio That's package. Right. So we take race cam again on the front of the Audi. Baird still in control. 1.3 seconds up on Brabham. Richards snapping away at the heels. The BMW pair, two laps to go as they come across the start finish line. Now Jimmy Richards, out of all these cars, he's making a real charge here. He's opened up a bit of a gap on Morris. I think he's the fastest man in the track at the moment, is he not? He certainly, no, I was gonna say, but it's 220.73 for Jeff Brabham, the fastest man so far. Richards has done a 221.3. So he's about six tenths slower than Morris in overall fastest lap terms, but boy, on the track he's really going for it. Look at this race camp shot. Oh, one of the Peugeots, I think it is. That's a familiar sight in Britain. <laughs> <laughs> yes, just as Patrick Watson. <laughs> Another dead Peugeot. Yeah, one of the Foxtel Peugeots. Jeffrey Fuller, Mark Adam, he can't see the number of the car, but he is out for the day. We go back to race camp on the front of Brad Jones' Audi A4. And this great scrap. Between Volvo, BMW and Audi. Whoa. Morris gets very wide on the way out of the cutting. Three different sets of tyres there too. Yokohama, Dunlop and Mitchell. Does the four-wheel drive of the Audi have much more of an effect on tyres at all? Well, what it does is it spreads the load better on the tyre wear and the braking. The car is very stable then and, and it, it, it's not very hard on its tyres and therefore as the race progresses the Audi is just as strong at the end as it was at the beginning. It's fascinating watching the Volvo and the BMW ahead of James. Morris really pounces on the Richards across the top of the mountain. And we think that, that uh, BMW would be much more uh, stable across the top than the front wheel drive Volvo. It would be a little bit light but then as they come out of Forest Elbow, Jim will be gone. And Oh, Bradley Jones might be boxed in here. He doesn't quite have enough in a straight line to blast past this pair, and they're very strong on the, uh, the twisty, fast bits of the circuit. So he's going to have to uh, push harder away from the stake from the two in front if he's going to get in front. Baird still in control. Brabham in second. They're not pulling away, though. No. Jim, Jim's hanging on well. So the fastest lap so far, 227.3 on Morris. Brabham, sorry, a 220.31 in qualifying. So he's only uh, 
but half a second off his qualifying pace. Morris really pushing hard and closing the gap. I'll tell you what, Brabham's going to have a look now. down the inside. Yep. With Brabham switches left, switches right. And the brakes just a puff of smoke from Baird. Gets a little bit sideways. You can see he's feeling the pressure now. One lap to go. Could get him down the inside, yeah. 6.2 kilometres left of Mount Panorama. Here comes Brabham. Has a look down the inside. He'll go ultra deep under brakes. He'll yeah. try it. Yeah. Side by side as they come through the corner. That should help Jim Richards. He'll close in here. Baird got squeezed over in the dirt. Lost a bit of speed, as John Clellan said. Jim Richards will take advantage of that. Nice police run. He'll be side by side as they come up Mountain Straight. Look at the squirt from this Volvo. For the could just final benefit. time. Jim could just get this. Side by side as they come over the rise. He's not on the right lane, though, unfortunately. Yep. Brabham. It's a good battle. Five cars there. Brabham in control. Baird back to second. He'll be angry about that. He's led most of the race. So a great battle here. BMW, BMW, Volvo, Audi. Coming under fire from another of the BMWs. It's amazing how that, just that little slip between these two leading cars here bunched the whole pack up again. Yep, it's the last lap, last opportunity for Jimmy Richards. Whoa! Hits the wall. Paul Morris, way out of shape coming through Reed Park, got up on the ripple strips, actually brushed the wall. He Very. trained really hard. <laughs> and a great save by the young Queenslander. Across the top for the final time, Morris. Back there, his teammate Brabham well in control, opened up a couple of car lengths on bed. Look, look at that on replay, look at Morris. Crunch! Managed to keep the wing mirrors on, though. That was a good run. <laughs> I tell you what, Brad Jones, might have, his heart might have missed a beat there as well. Whoa! Brabham spun. Brabham, now he's spun coming down the hill. That's exactly the same place where ah. Terry Finnegan went off. Pushing too hard. Well, well. He will not be a happy boy. No. Oh, so he had the race shot to bits. Baird, meanwhile, takes back the lead. That moves Jimmy Richards up to second position. And Brad Jones third, and Morris has dropped back to four. <laughs> dear, oh, dear. So Brabham will not be happy when he gets back to the pits, I'm pretty sure he had that one in the bag. Here comes Craig Baird, the New Zealander playing in, especially for this race, doing a great job for BMW Australia. Volvo in second, talk about great jobs. I think the Volvo boys would be uh, doing handstands with this result. Jimmy Richards up to second position. Brad Jones must have thought it was Christmas, everything happened in front of him then. <laughs> so, last lap, last corner for Craig Baird, all the way from Hamilton, New Zealand. First up win in the BMW at Mount Panorama as he crosses the line to take the checkered flag. Jimmy Richards in the Volvo 850 in second and Bradley Jones in the Audi A4 in third. Well, let's just look at, have a look at that incident again with Jeff Brabham. A great overtaking. They've had the race in the bag, got all out of shape coming over the top of the mountain. A big lose. Airborne, the car right off the ground, sliding across the track. Cars behind trying to take evasive action. He's heading toward the concrete wall. He made just have avoided it. Mm. Very lucky guy, Jeff Brabham. Boy, oh boy. Back with more action in just a moment. <laughs> 